Welcome to another episode of Follow the Brand. I am your host, Grant McGaw, CEO of Five Star BDM, a five star personal branding and business development company. I want to take you on a journey that takes another deep dive into the world of personal branding and business development using compelling personal story, business conversations, and tips to improve your personal brand. By listening to the Follow the Brand podcast series, you will be able to differentiate yourself from the competition and allow you to build trust with prospective clients and employers. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Make it one that will set you apart, build trust, and reflect who you are. Developing your five-star personal brand is a great way to demonstrate your skills and knowledge. If you have any questions for me or my guests, please email me at grant.magaw, spelled M-C-G-A-U-G-H, at 5 Star BDM, B for brand, D for development, M for masters.com. Now let's begin with our next five-star episode on Follow the Brand. Hello, hello, hello. It's your favorite global podcast host, Grant McGaw, CEO of 5 Star BDM, where we help you build a five-star brand people will follow. Coming to you with another fantastic episode of the Follow Brand Podcast. Now, if you've ever wondered how someone goes from a globe-trotting game designer to an integral cog in the Lamborghini R&D machine, then you are in for a treat. We've got the extraordinary Oz in the studio today. And his journey from the classroom to the racetrack, from startups to game design, is one for the books. Oz doesn't limit his passion to technology and fast cars. He's out here breaking barriers. He's developed this game-changing application that allows the deaf and blind to interact with music. This isn't just about making pretty sounds. It's about rehabilitation, communication, and connection. And we're not stopping there. We're going to dive deep into how AI, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and augmented reality are revolutionizing our lives. Us is at the forefront of these technologies, leveraging them to create educational and immersive experiences that are nothing short of breathtaking. But with great power comes great responsibility. We'll dwell into the fast-paced world of technological development, the impact it has on society, and the necessary controls we need in place as we integrate these technologies into our daily lives. We're talking about the potential risk of AI, the crucial role of engineers in its development, and the importance of using AI responsibly. So buckle up, listeners. We're going on a thrilling exploration of the promise, the potential, and the perils of technology with us. Get your notepads ready, because this is an episode you won't want to miss. Welcome to the Follow Brand Podcast, where we are building a five-star brand that you can follow. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Follow Brand Podcast. You know, I am your host, Grant McCall, and you've seen me interview guests in Australia. You've seen me interview guests in Singapore. You've seen me interview guests in Europe, but you have not seen me interview Shahar Oz. Shahar Oz, I met him on Gatherbirds uh, with a, on a worldwide stage, worldwide uh, emerging technology platform, talking about humanity first. Uh, uh, primary uh, issues in time as we start to really build out in this AI world, this VR world, this AR world, and all these type of things. We can never forget why we're doing this. And I think Oz really personifies that. I want him to introduce himself. Tell you where he's at now, because I never know where Oz is really located. He's all, always, he might be in Israel, he could be in Egypt, he could be in the Mediterranean, he could be, I, I don't know. We're going to find out. So, Oz, would you like to introduce yourself? 
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Grant. Uh, well, so I am, let's say I'm around 40 years old now, coming from originally from Israel, but uh, after traveling around the world a bit after uh, some some years, 20, 25 years, I went around the world. I I landed back in Israel. I started working, uh, st studying uh, how to use education uh, technologies for education, and uh, then I started working as a game designer. Actually, not related. I uh, I had a a few side jobs as a teacher in schools. Uh, then I I found a steady job as a game designer in a startup. After some years, Intel Corporation acquired this startup. Uh, our team kind of expanded, and I had access to more technologies. And after some years after that, then uh, I had a, I went out to to do private uh, uh, private career as a consultant, and I joined some startup teams in Israel, and uh, then. Uh, but uh, throughout all this time, I was searching how to move, as you say, to 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 find another place in the world because just for other reasons, we can talk later about why. And I found myself doing an MBA in Italy about supercars and Ferrari and Lamborghini. Today, I work for Lamborghini as a, in the R&D department, uh, developing new concepts for the digital interface of the cars. Uh, and uh, yeah, so today I live in Italy uh, to answer the question. So today I live in Italy and uh, traveling between Italy and Israel, uh, also working online with our online customers from around the world, uh, supporting them in their developments and also working on some projects of mine, of course. I've seen some projects that you worked on that really got my attention. I mean, I think you were at a trade show and you were demonstrating to someone that did not have, uh, I think it was, uh, they were deaf. They had that, you know, uh, hard of hearing. You had developed an application in which they can interact with it on a digital framework, you know, uh, with a touch screen, I believe it was. And it was phenomenal. First, tell us about that application. This was a project to uh, to an, a very nice uh, team of. Uh, it was actually a project that that came from another team, so I supported them. But uh, I was working with them as a. So, what we did is uh, we took a lot using a lot of sensors. Uh, sensors that detect uh, body motion, uh, face deta face expressions, uh, distance sensors, so standard, many types of mm, mm, sensors uh, to in order to help various um, movement abilities. So whatever the person could actually do with his body, so either with their body, either um, from eye blinking to making a voice to uh, making an, uh, yeah, a movement with the hand or maybe clapping the hand or moving fingers. If you are in a wheelchair, you can only move fingers or whatever it is that you could do, even if moving just a leg, whatever it is that you can do, uh, the system allowed you to play a certain music, a certain music instrument. So the idea was that um, the company started, actually the founders were uh, a group of musicians. One of them, or two of them, if I remember well, had a, a relation. All of them were Israelis, by the way, and they all had some friends or family members who got injured in a... In a Either it's a war or it was just an accident, car accident, etc. And uh, some of them were also musicians. And they wanted to give them a chance to play again, to continue playing. And they used technology, uh, and I helped them from the te technical side to, uh, to create this uh, system, this machine. And eventually that machine... They actually implemented it inside uh, the, the rehabilitation uh, places, uh, ser service centers, and uh, allowing 
people to the, the, the patients or the people to create bands and they actually played together and they used it as a rehabilitation in the repetition process and the doctors had actually an interface to see the progress of the movement of your hand and how much you are moving your uh, your limbs etc et so they made uh, they took this device not just for fun but also for the rehabilitation uh, process and they had a full system about this uh, I actually don't know what's the status of the company today, but I will uh, definitely check now and I will get back to you on this. So, yeah. Well, I saw it. And just the fact that you're enabling other people that have gone through our system trauma and they, they have limited range, limited motion, they have limitations, and you're enabling them to be able to interact, especially with music. Music is the essence of life. So exactly. you can allow people to interact with sound and marry that with their emotion, their expressions, their thoughts. Man, their imagination comes back alive. They feel like they're fully participating in life again. And I'm sure that's shortening that cycle of rehabilitation. So thank you for participating in that uh, particular project. Uh, definitely. The, 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 if I remember well, the video that you saw was actually a blind person using that system. And uh, they were, of course, the, the, the sound and music is definitely something that uh, brings back your uh, old, let's say, natural memories. I would say that uh, taste and sound are one of those two two of those uh, senses that we are missing let's say in today's technology or that they can connect to uh how to say more deeper emotions uh, that we have and uh so i think that food and music are uh, stuff that tell a lot about a certain culture so if you go to a new place a new culture a new city uh, what we, me and my wife, usually what we do when we go to a new country, we just take a cooking course, for example, to, yeah. to, to experience the culture, to know what the culture is all about. You can go to a, to a, a good nature, uh, local restaurant, and then you can take the, the actual food experience, how they eat, what they eat, tells you a lot about the, the culture. So. That's something to realize, man. I got to do that because I do when I travel. I go, you're right. That you when you and when you ask people like, oh, what was it like in you know a certain location? They always start with with the food, you know, and the experience. And I didn't know what it was going to. And the taste was oh, it was oh, it was great. And then you get the feel for the people as well through the food experience, right? And then you can go out and start doing other things. So yeah, man, good pick up on that, man. I, Definitely going to follow that every time I go, especially when I go out of the country. You've got to take, and I think about that because here I am in Florida. I live in Miami, Florida. We have so many cultures here, you know, exactly. so you could partake in Caribbean cuisine, South American, you know, straight American. You got to go looking for that. It seems and then there's a lot of Italian here in Italy. I mean, we love Italian food here. The States, there's no doubt about it. You can't get it. There's a lot of seafood things like that, Mediterranean things. So I don't know if you're gonna get it. So you gotta go look for the American experience. We we borrow from everybody else's culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's 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 good. That's part of the the collective is uh, is also some kind of a, a synthesization is a synthesization is also some kind of a culture. So that's true. Very true. I want to know more about your uh, technology background. You alluded to it, but give us some more in depth. Like, what are you? You're a designer. Describe yourself as a designer. What, what you got got you into yeah. it, and then what you're doing now. Explaining who I am, prof my professional identity is one of the biggest uh, questions that I had uh, in th throughout the last uh, what it is 23, so the last uh, tw 13 years or 14 years, because. I have always been a, comp a mix. From where I began as a as a person that came as a teacher, I began as a as an educator. Until today, I define myself as an educator, and until today, I I do private workshops, so I workshops for kids in summer schools and things like this. So and I I love teaching. This is definitely part of my life, and that's definitely part of the my 
my life goals, let's say the, the big uh, long-term goals, etc. So my one of my big dreams, for example, is to build a school that does things a little different. Um, but in parallel to this, I have my technical skills, which is, you know, pro- programming, developing video games, uh, designing uh, applications. And uh, I found that what I found is that the, there, are, there is a the, 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 the connection to all of those projects, to all of those uh, things that I do or that I create or that I love to work on, even in the car, for example, the interface of the car, the thing that I like um, that connects everything is the fact that I, I would, I love I, to, to understand the, the, who sits in the, in the, who is the user? Who sits in in the back seat of my of of the product? Who actually uses the product? And how do I design something that they would uh, appreciate, enjoy, or or make good use of, or, or find it useful for them in their life? So maybe maybe make something easier in their life, uh, and allow them to do something faster or easier or in a more fun way. Uh, so I usually don't do games just for the game. I usually do games as a simulation or games as a message, like a, a way to transfer some kind of a message or games that will uh, simulate some some uh, situation, a real life skill or whatever it is that, that is relevant. Like a, we call it serious games or games for learning. There are a lot of uh, names or titles these days for those kind of games. but. Uh, of course, I had to do a lot of uh, practice in the in the actual, let's say, games or te- games with technologies. But uh, yeah, so I would say that as a designer, I think my my first and most uh, talent or the, the the thing that I love to do or most interesting for me to do is to understand who is the person that actually is going to use, and I will try to define them in a as as best as I can, and then I will do my best in order to 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 make something that they would would appreciate or they would like to use. And yeah, that is a great goal. You know, you, you, as I you took me through that, I'm thinking Roblox, and I'm thinking you know Unreal Engine, and um, you know obviously people know about the, the metaverse and things like that, virtual reality, augmented reality. But how do you really take the technology and enhance the human experience? You know, we've got this AI that's out there just took the world by storm. Yeah. You know, chat GPT, everybody's like pros and cons. Or there's a lot of trepidation. And I tell people all the time, this is a tool. It's a tool. You got to just know how to use it to enhance life. Now, there's going to be people out there that'll take things and do, you know, uh, you know, and be selfish with it and do things that are detrimental. You can't focus on that, you know. But people are going to do that. They've been doing that all the time. They take the internet, there's cyber criminals, there's other. I mean, yeah, you, you can focus on that, but that's not the bulk of what people are doing. I like what you're doing. Let's take a technology and how can I enhance someone's experience? Exactly. You know, so as you, especially a child, right? You're very influential at that time, and you take them through, you know, a journey and a storyline. And since you're an educator, you want them to get something out of it to expand their knowledge, their intelligence, their wisdom, and then give them a better way. And I know that immersive technology that we're seeing now in the virtual reality world, man, because you're so immersed, talking about your sensory world, right? You get inside one of these goggles and it just transports you into that world. Now, you're in the hands of that designer, that developer. At that point, what experience are you going to have? A lot of times it's depending on how that design is set it up. Plus, it's completely interactive because it's not just you. You have other people, living things that you're interacting with as well. That's got to be it. Do you do designs in the virtual world, like in a metaverse type of uh, setting? Well, I think, first of all, you, you've touched a lot of points here. But let's say, let, let me say, let me start with the 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 augmented reality and virtual reality points because that's like um, in in one of my in one of my it's a it's a kind of a big question that that 
especially these days when we are speaking about this metaverse concept and that that makes a lot of that brings a lot of things under one umbrella that is a little bit unclear and uh, uh, but but the, the, to, to differentiate for a second this augmented reality and virtual reality so virtual reality will separate people let's say it will it will make us uh, mm, isolated more in, in some ways no uh, many of of the technologies that we had until today even video games video games are something that you play right now either in a mobile phone or in a joystick with a tv or whatever it is or in but you are in your room and you are you can still listen to your mother or your mother can still come and knock on the door and take you out of the pc if if this is uh, you know if this is dinner but the 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 virtual reality is is really isolating us in some ways so it's 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 a little more it's a, like a one step further than than that situation in a, in some ways of of isolating let's say the isolating effect um so that's that's one thing but augmented reality uh, so that's obviously i think obviously you know you understand that i i don't like that technology so much so even though even though i was working on it i i am still working on it i think it has a good use there are some good use cases for it for example in the world of simulation in the world of work when we can simulate the uh, some a product for example that for example in my in my work if i want to simulate a new how a new car or a new ex driving experience would look like. I can use the virtual reality. That would that would be awesome. That would be amazing simulation. But when I use this for work, this is completely different because everybody needs to work. So you are using this product, fine, five minutes, one minute, you use this, you understand what's going on, you go back to your work. You don't, con you are, the, the, the goal of the product is not to, uh, keep you inside the system like a video game in or like a social network to make profit. It's the, the goal of the product is to simulate a situation and then you can continue working. The, um, uh, the same also for education. We have a, there are a lot of training simulations, training simulations in virtual reality or training for um, uh, pho uh, phobia, uh, fears. To, to come to to get over some fears so you can simulate the spiders or simulate heights and you you can experience the the the, the your face in your fear even in in a control environment simulation that's that's a good thing but the in uh, augmented reality I always said a few years ago when we had some, I, I am part of some communities about the augmented reality. And uh, and I, I always said that the, the augmented reality is going to be something that is bigger than, than what virtual reality will ever be. So whatever virtual reality can arrive to, the augmented reality will be bigger than that because the target audience so in the future, let's say that all of the society already understands the augmented reality and the virtual, reality, and we we accept the the, the existence of these these products, etc. Even in this situation, the virtual reality will be only relevant for the use cases that I just said, and maybe video games. Uh, you can also, of course, uh, talk about uh, you know video games, gambling, and porn. The three. Uh, big uh, uh, industries that make use of any technology possible, let's say, but those are the outsiders. And then you have the, the actual use cases of the technology. And the, on the other side, you have augmented reality, which is a technology that would be, or the target use is for every, the use for everybody, because it's just a device that you would put on your, either it's a glasses or it's a contact lens or whatever it is that you would put on yourself. It would be lightweight. It would use just as a mobile phone, as phone calls, as your Apple Watch or whatever smartwatch we have, and it will just be a helping hand in your in your life, in your daily life. Therefore, it would be more widespread. Um, so this is just for the difference between the two technologies, uh, as as the, for the basic use or the the core. Uh, the, let's say 
the core use of this, uh, and not just video games and uh, whatever. Um, the use cases that we have today, the marketing or whatever it is, the, the, the actual, um, let's say, the, the, the goal of this technology and wh where it sees itself. This episode is brought to you by Five Star BDM. Five Star BDM is a professional consulting and advisory group keenly focused on business development services for small to mid-sized businesses and entrepreneurs. Although every business is unique, they often share challenges that can be addressed through smart branding. Services include process improvement in operations, digital strategy and transformation, business intelligence, digital marketing, and personal branding. Our five-star business and personal branding company has helped a number of professionals and organizations to optimize and grow. The result is more business, more opportunities, better reach, positive outcomes. Please visit www.5starbdm.com to learn more and view all the episodes of Follow the Brand. So, as for AI and metaverse, uh, yes, I agree with you. There are there is there is going on. These two topics have been an explosion in the last uh, year and a half, year two years, I guess, one year and a half, and uh, exploded absolutely because of ChatGPT and uh, previously previous uh, the metaverse. And uh, for me, this was this was a big. Uh, I don't want to say a slap in the face, but it was like a, a, a wake up call. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, it's like, a, I, I always knew because talking to engineers as an, <laughs> because it's weird because I am an engineer in some ways, but I don't like to talk to my, on myself as an engineer. So I talking to engineers in my, in my companies, it's weird because I was always working with machine learning and artificial intelligence engineers, let's say. And I know what it is to work with people that not always they, are, they don't always think of, of the of the bad implications of some technology. Mm -hmm. So maybe they are working on something, they are doing something, and they are they they are working only about the technology and develop the technology, which is which is amazing because then we can have progress. But if you work too fast and you achieve something too fast, then society will not know how to handle this this progress too too much no so uh just this morning or this no this morning there was a conversation on linkedin and somebody said uh, uh yes but we can we could work together with the ai so all of those conversations and i said this yes we can but we need the society to understand what's going on we need we need the the this process to to the, the society needs time to accept something new, a new change to inside itself. So we need to allow that time and this 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 uh, change to be integrated. If you bring something too fast, it will be rejected. It is it is it is uh, felt as a, as an outsider. It is felt uh, the same way that. Uh, Immigrants come to a new country. If you put a lot of them at, at the same moment, they will have a refugee camp. If you put them slowly by slowly, then it's okay. It's accept, it, it will be acceptable. The same way as a, a virus. If you put a virus immediately in big amounts, you have COVID. If you put a virus slowly by slowly, you have the flu, and that's, that's acceptable. It, it, it depends on how you want to integrate something in, uh, into your your daily life, and we have to do it in a regulator, in a regulated way, in in, in a, uh, under some rules, etc. Et but in any way, uh, this explosion that everybody say, "Oh yes, it's the technology development, da, 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 it's very good." No, it's not that good, and we have to we have to to, to take the responsibility that we need in order to have the technology. Uh, integrated in our life. Augmented reality and virtual reality are technologies that exist from the 80s, 90s. It takes time that we arrived here in 2023 that everybody, oh, I talk to everybody now. Ah, yes, I know. I heard about this uh, helmet that you put. It's like 40 years ago that the technology exists. 
and uh, and and it took us time to arrive here and that's that's a good thing and it's it's just you know as a young person you arrive 15 years old 17 19 20 you arrive and you found this new technology and you're so excited i remember myself at the beginning with augmented reality that was the same and i said yes i i already know the use cases it in in one year i can develop these kind of things and now after <laughs> 15 years later, I can still hear people with the same kind of passion arriving and saying, ah, yes, I know how to, this, this technology will be used for, in one year we can develop. And that was like, uh, and I guess that also older people than me that were uh, <laughs> uh, innovators in the past, they were they were talking in the same Now, what you're talking about is the adoption rate, and I am so glad you brought that up. Now, and I'm hoping that, as you said, our society, everybody's on a different levels of, of what they're doing, how they utilize. You know, they, everybody's, you know, they, this big rush, web 3.0, everybody's like, oh, 3.0. But most people don't even understand what that is. You know, it's like, I just use the internet. I don't know these different <laughs> terms and whatnot. And I don't know what they're doing, like, in the background. I'm just trying to communicate. What are you doing? There? I'm just communicating. And I'm, I'm interacting. And I'm hoping people that are kind of in control of certain these things are doing things responsibly. As we found out, not all of them were. You look at what Facebook was doing with information, and then you're like, wow, you know, that, that was not good because we didn't know such an explosion upon the human imagination and the dopamine and all these things that make things exactly. Really, somewhat addictive to some of these technologies. You know, you got to really think about that. Like, what's the effect? You know, going to be now when I utilize AI. AI, yeah, it's been around for a while. I think I was listening to people like, wow, you know, natural language processing has been around for twenty five years. It just wasn't as advanced as it is now. And then I can pull some things together, other technology, make it really, really, you know an effective tool and it doesn't sound so machine-like, you know, and I think that's where we're going on. Like how human do we want to make our, some of our creations really? When we get to a point, we can't tell a difference between a human being and a bot. You know, some, some things like that, you're like, yeah, that's not good. But I don't know if our technology, if our technology can really simulate you completely, then you gotta look at yourself, you know, like, are you that simple? That they can completely, you know, you can be you know, completely replicated, you know, by a, a machine. I don't know. But I think certain things in certain use cases, I always tell people, and I've learned this in my 25 years of technology. Technology is very, very good to me for two things. Two things. Those two things are, number one, communication. If you need to communicate very quickly or, or just, you know, robustly, Technology is very, very, just like me right now. We're communicating. We're in two different places in space and time. You know, but we can communicate. Technology is great for that. The other thing is doing what we're doing right now. We're collapsing that window of time and space. Very, very good at making things being done quicker and, and better, more efficient. So those are the two use cases that I always look at when I look at certain things. If I And I like your analogy of our augmented reality. I think that's going to be really what's going to really take off. I do see virtual reality as more use case. I love it for training curriculum. Uh, yeah. Anytime you need to like, let's simulate going into a burning building and, and exactly. get our people up to speed than just burn a building <laughs> and send them in there. You know, so you can get up to speed. Exactly. What I also tell people all the time is this. In order to learn how to swim, you've got to swim. You can simulate only certain things. You know, at least you'll get, but until you're in the water, you're, you're you know, swimming or attempting to swim, you really need to do that. You know, and that's that reality has to still be in the equation of what you're trying to accomplish. But I've seen some very, very good things. And what I like about it is that I think it really uh, can enhance our imagination. And, and utilize our imaginative and creativity. So we're so analytical these days. When people think about science and think about technology, they really are thinking about analytics, you know, the an analytics of all. But the analytics is a layer. So what you want to do 
is be able to bring together creativity, the creative, you know, sex into that analytical. I think you can make some very, very thought-provoking and some things with a lot of emotional intelligence into it that can be enhancing for us as we move forward. Like we go back to what we first talked about, being able to create something that en uh, enables someone that doesn't have certain abilities uh, is fantastic. And that's what we talked about on Gallibur, right? We were talking about, hey, how can we use some of our technology to help humanity? There's, and there's 8 billion people or so on this on the earth, and some of them all have different capabilities or abilities. And if we can help augment some of that, why not? Exactly. I, I think that... Uh, um... Okay, so I wrote to myself some points here. That that's that was really nice. That was really nice. You said you said uh, first of all you said about the two use cases of technology, and I think that a third one that we see with the chat GPT today, like it was exist also before today. For example, let's take. Uh, so I will tell you the the use, the use case was um, the third use case is handling a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So I would say that uh, more effectively, obviously. So. We can see this with the Excel sheets as in the past. And today we can see it with ChatGPT or his, its future um, arrivals that are, uh, uh, yeah, that will be more, um, uh, how to say, experts in, in a field. So there would be ChatGPT for, or let's say, AI for uh, design, AI for creativity, AI for um, uh, designing a power plant, designing a, a production plant, designing this. So it would be a, a data, uh, uh, let's say, a, 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 an AI that would take a lot of data about designing a factory. And then you would say, hello. I would like to design a factory in uh, China and I have, or in Africa or in USA, and I have this and this amount of space. And I would like to design the most efficient way to do this and this and this product. How would you design this uh, factory? And you would just design a proposal, number one. No, I don't like this proposal because it has this, this, this. Ah, okay, then I can design proposal number two, proposal number three. So you would. You would have, and this is something that, in my opinion, is is completely feasible. Uh, we have image recognition, we have understanding of the the platform, we have data. It can be understood. So it, we just have to do some machine learning in order to create this data. It's not something that is completely out. Uh, let's say, uh, not feasible of today's technology. So this is this is tools that would uh, will arrive, and actually I have no problem with these kind of tools because these tools doesn't make anything uh, that we didn't we, we don't have today because yeah. it doesn't change the status quo. It, it, we have already the people that design factories; they will just do it faster. That's that's, that's it. Fine. That's it. That's it. That's it. But the point is. That when what we what you were speaking before about communication, so ChatGPT or his, uh, I would say, uh, and also Yuval Yuval Noah Harari, another Israeli guy that I I think that uh, many people know by now, the historian that uh, wrote some books about the history of humankind, etc. He had a, a quote, uh, an interview a few months ago, last month. Uh, he said um, that the problem with ChatGPT, or what the problem that he in, uh, this tool introduced in our life, is the fact that it hacked, or it, it, it might be a, it, we we might have a, a hacking of our language model, our communication models. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the AI is now able to understand how humans communicate and how we are, uh, what is the language of our lives, then, then this is a problem because now there is a system, artificial system, that is able to hack and understand us and then communicate with us. So emotionally, uh, in, in all the levels, emotionally, professionally, et cetera. So this will allow, obviously, to the arrivals of tools that might manipulate us, might be used to manipulate us. It, it, this, of course, can be good 
But most of the use cases are not so good. We can be manipulated in uh, doing things that we don't want. So this would be, if you remember uh, all the Facebook things that all the the the, the, the yeah the manipulation so the data, yeah, them, uh, no, or yeah. The, the algorithms of uh, whatever social networks, not just Facebook. Let's let's clear. Uh, all, not only Mark Zuckerberg, but all the social networks have the same kind of uh, problems. And then now we have AI, which introduced new type of problems that is even worse than what happened in the social uh, networks. So yeah. we have we have kind of these this situation now. And uh, if you guys, if if your viewers remember, this is uh, there was uh, the movie Hair. And yeah. the movie, um, there was Chappie. There were a lot of. There, it was like a, I think it was like a year, two thousand six, seven, eight, or something like this. There, they had. There was an explosion of movies about this uh, uh, technological explosion of the robots, etc., artificial intelligence, etc. and uh, transcendence. There was there was several movies, one after another, and and I think that uh, the the engineers. We have to remember what we are developing. So, as a society, and uh, we have to remember those those uh, possible futures. I am not saying that this is for sure the future that we are going to, but we need to make sure that this is not the future that we are going to. So, because that's not what why we develop those technologies. Yeah. So, I am not saying this is a you know a, c- a complete certainty that this is what will happen, but. We just have, and also the engineers don't want, I hope, this to happen. But we just, everybody have to understand that this is a possibility, especially now. And we need to make sure that we need to set up the regulations, the rules. The well, time. what you're saying is so important, the training. Because AI is, is how you train it. But if you, exactly. like any program, so programs, computerized program. But you program up to certain things. So an algorithm is programmed a certain way. That's why you get the certain feeds today exactly. on social media. So that you go out and you look at a certain product service, and because of how it's programmed, they call cookies and things of this nature, so doing some tracking, like, oh wow, you know what? It appears that Oz really likes chocolate chip cookies. We're gonna make sure he gets cookie, 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 cookie. So he gets a lot of cookies. So he can buy cookies and guess what? Whoever making making those cookies is getting more money. So they 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 want to encourage that kind of behavior. So you gotta look at who's developing the artificial intelligence, who actually owns it, the owner, and what do you, what is their um, what's their benefit for doing that, right? Yeah. So you look at Web 3.0, they're hoping that it's more open, so you have more choice. You're not just being fed certain uh, information. But we know from governments of past and other regimes, man- manipulation of communication is a human thing that mm-hmm. we've done to control masses. So to say that, oh, well, we won't use that in AI. Well, I, yeah, we're already doing it. So, <laughs> um, but you have to be aware. Uh, you know, you have to be aware. So you you bring up great points. We do need to be responsible and and really take a look at what are we really creating. I know a lot of things that uh, Christopher Lafayette talked about. Yeah, so what yeah, exactly. Technology becomes more advanced than the technology. Yes, now that's going to be weird. When your AI starts telling you, well, that's wrong. No, I don't agree with you. You know, it starts arguing with you. Well, well to the, the, let's say the good thing, the good thing is that we are not there yet. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I can, I can, def, I can tell you, I had, um, so um, a few, so when, I, when all of this AI when I started to see in LinkedIn or whatever, in the social networks, I started to see posts about, ah, I can, AI wrote me a website in just uh, this, I wrote him this and he wrote me a full website, he wrote me a full video game, a full application. I I had to check this out. Mm-hmm. So I made a, a, a weekend retreat with myself, with my PC and with my a, with the chat GPT. And I started and I said, OK, one, this is going to be a wonderful article. I'm going to write a video game with AI 
And this will be a wonderful article. I can write, you know, all of the, this is the code that AI wrote and, and I will publish this. This is an amazing project that I started, right? I started doing this. And I said for a full weekend and already after a few hours, I understood that it's not really in this. So I saw that I, I felt like I am speaking. So in a, in a way, I felt like I'm speaking with a guy that is very young. Oh, so there are two options. Oh, he, he, it is a very young person that, uh, let's say, a very junior developer that doesn't really notice the thing that he writes. So <laughs> it's like one time he writes a code about something and then he uses another code, not this one, like another one. I don't know. Like so he confuses himself. He confused himself. Or intentionally he is lazy. <laughs> Yeah, because so it's just regurgitating like, information. It doesn't really understand. It's not a consciousness, right? Exactly. So it's, so just, I know. it's just reflecting information that it has in its database. That's it. So I, I was, I was really at the end of this week of this weekend. I was like, "Come on, what are we guys? What are we talking about? This is stupid. This is a stupid person that I have to work with now." With but, but. So at the end of this weekend, I didn't have a video game. I didn't have anything to present except for the fact that I present, I will present something that is actually how, how not effective that is. But at the end, I did understand one thing. First of all, that this improvement that ChatGPT makes, so the fact that we have a system that I actually communicate in this way, so I actually managed to get a lot of pieces of code that were correct in some, some ways. No, in many ways it was correct. The fact that I managed to do it really helped me at the end. So in the end, it did write some stuff faster than, than if I would just do it by myself with Google, say. Uh, and also, uh, so... And then I said, okay, let's take a different approach. Let's write something completely different, completely new, with a new concept or in a different way where I am in control. Not, I don't let him to be in control. I am telling him what to do and what to write. And I tell him exactly the little details that I need him to do. I tried a different approach. And that approach actually went quite well. I have a side project that I'm writing now together with this uh, kind of a simulator that I'm trying to build. But anyway, that's a new project. Uh, it's going nice, it's going better. And what I'm trying to say is that when you understand how to use the tool, it, it, is, it is good. It's, it's, good. it's much faster than to work with, with a junior developer because I am instructing the junior developer yes. and I know yeah. exactly what I am going to do. It's like a calculator. I tell, I, that's my analogy. Exactly. People exactly. ask me, it's like a calculator. You, you have to give it the right information to get the right yeah. output. Right. If you give it a wrong equation, it's gonna give you a wrong equation. Exactly. So, but it can't think for you. Exactly. That's the that's thing. The, that's the thing. It'll just give you the information quick. Like I said, it's gonna take you. That's why people don't go to the library as much, right? Because you can get that information quicker by googling. It. There's a reason. Exactly. So I go back to what I said earlier. If you want to do things quicker, you know, technology is great. If you want to communicate more expansively. Technology is great. So thank you for exactly. uh, doing that research. Uh, these kinds of conversations are important. So people don't think of Frankenstein and it's going to exactly. be going loose. You know, like, no, you know, calculators didn't, yeah, it displaced people with a slide rule. Yeah, they're on this for sure. But <laughs> I think, I think for, you know, most of the mathematicians and whatnot are still doing, doing, doing their thing. So. Um, it's not the end of the world when it comes to that, but we do want to look at things that can enhance the human experience. And I do like that. Exactly. So we're going to conclude here. Exactly. But before we do, Oz, you got to tell us how people can get in touch with you. You've, you've sparked some good conversation. And I know there's a world of designers and engineers and people that are interested. They're like, wow, that was a great experiment. You got white paper on that, you know? So how do they get in touch with you? Well, uh, I am. I have a, a website. I could. Uh, I could. I could share with you the. the um, uh, we can. We can. We can write it later. It's okay. The. The. the um, 
So if in general, what I what I enjoy helping people is either in the beginning phase of, of a concept just to explore what can be done. So you have a napkin idea on a napkin. You think you have found something or a, 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 some kind of a, you know, a black, uh, a missing point in some process. It doesn't matter which process. It can be anything, basically. Really, it can be anything. It, it must be something that has a, a person in the middle because I, 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 as I said, I like to go into the mind of people. So it's not if it's between machines or if it's solving a technical problem, maybe I'm not the right person. But if you have, if you have a, uh, you arrived in a bottleneck situation and you understand that there is a bottleneck somewhere in the process, I, I could help in uh, probably somehow to, to help from there to identify maybe a tool that can help solve a certain situation. Um, and uh, of course, if it relates to education or to gamification, to make something. So I really, what I usually like to do is to take something that is completely difficult to do today, or you have a lot of pain doing that task, and then turn it into something that actually people enjoy making and yes. it will be faster. Yeah. So like it will that. be faster to make and it will be fun to do. Of course, not all the stuff are, are, are like this, but usually it, it actually happens. So it's like, because let's take, let's go back to the rehabilitation or we can go back to any education, let's say a situation in school that you have, let's take another project, a situation in school that you have uh, kids making, uh, uh, excluding another kid from their group, for example. This is a situation that happens a lot in schools uh, from, from the past until today. So what we did is uh, we built a, a board game together with the school, and we built a board game that actually the the people that would the kids that will be selected to play in the board game are ones that have problems between each other so we it was like a situation a pre-designed uh, situation and then uh the the teacher would give them tasks so the game gives them tasks as a group they must complete the game as a group and they they completed the tasks only they would be able to complete the game only if they know each other well uh, only if they can collaborate. So they, they, the tasks force collaboration on you. And if you lose, you lose. And the, the fact is that if you don't speak to each other, for sure you will lose the game and then you would be able to, you would be forced to get to know each other. So the teacher would make, later they would make a reflection with the kids and then they will understand that they have to collaborate and know each other better and then they can do a second session. So it would enrich the, the communication. The, um, so the idea is that everything that we try to do is uh, to make things uh, more fun, faster, and solve some some problems. So the, Man, the collaboration tools. Man. This, is, this has been a wonderful interview with you, Oz. This has been great. I'm sure people will get a lot of good value by listening. Yeah, this has been great. And I want to let your audience know they can... You all our episodes, all the episodes that follow the brand are available at Five Star Medium, and that is B for Brand, D for Development, and for Masters .com. This has been wonderful. Enjoy yourself out there in Italy. I'm going to go get me some Italian food right now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Gans. Thank you for this. You're welcome.